Thanks for tuning in. I wanted to remind you of our Road to 1,000 Subscribers giveaway that we have going on our YouTube channel. If you subscribe and have a public profile, you'll be entered to win a free RX Smart Gear original jump rope. You'll get to pick the pattern of the handles, the color and weight of the cable, and you'll be getting one of the best selling, best performing jump ropes out there. Every time we hit a new century mark with the number of subscribers to our channel, we'll randomly select a new winner. And our friend Dave Newman is going to throw in a little something extra for each winner. So a special thanks to our sponsor, RX Smart Gear, to Dave Newman for being such a great partner, and to you for being a loyal listener. Good luck, and I hope you are our next winner. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I wanted to talk to you about our new sponsor, Element 26. They are an innovative company producing lots of products around the CrossFit, Strongman, powerlifting space. They have weightlifting belts. They have knee sleeves. They have thumb tape. Um, they have these cool little straps that go around the bars when you're um, trying to attach a bar to the rig and maybe using it for low bar work like pull ups for little kids or some modifications for like um, bar muscle ups when you're trying to teach someone to do them. And you know how you wrap those rubber bands around the rig and the J hook to kind of keep everything straight. Well, they made straps for that and their straps kind of like the straps you use for rings. Um, they have a really secure um, system on it and you can wrap around the bar and keep that nice and secure. I love their innovation. Their, um, their product development team is top notch and they're just coming up with really um, different ideas for our space. So check them out at element26.co. That's element26.co and tell them Kat sent you. All right, guys. So I just finished recording with Nate Ackerman. It was a great episode. We talked for an hour. Unfortunately, I did not hit the record button until about 25 minutes into the interview um, and didn't really realize it until the middle. And I didn't want to disrupt the flow of our conversation. He was great. Um, but some of the things that you missed, we talked about the fact that he was born outside of Chicago. And when he was eight, he moved into the house that he's in now um, in Northbrook, Illinois, just north of Chicago. Um, he has an older sister, a younger brother, and a mom and dad. He started out playing soccer, um, travel soccer, until the age of, well, like freshman or sophomore year. Um, and he looked into trying to get stronger for soccer, trying to be able to kick a ball harder, things like that, got into CrossFit. His mom is a very well-known master's athlete in her own right. She went to the games in 2017, I believe. Um, and when uh, Nate went to the games to watch his mom, he kind of really enjoyed um, all the bodies that he saw. And he thought like, this is what I want to do. I want to look like this. I want to perform like this. And that's kind of what started him on the path to CrossFit. So um, that's kind of the, the, the first bit of our conversation. I'll cut now to um, the rest of our conversation and my apologies to Nate um, for messing that up, but we'll get him back again and we'll talk about some other stuff. So keep watching. Here we go with Nate Ackerman. That's so funny. Um, so what was it like at the games? I mean, you'd been there to watch your mom, but now like you're a participant. This is your time. How cool was it? It was very cool. I just remember first going into like the check-in area and mm -hmm. I was like, just so shocked just seeing everyone there. My face was all red. I was just like, didn't know what to do. And the first day, just checking in, getting all your gear and stuff. That was like the coolest thing ever. I'll remember that forever, the rest of my life. And just meeting everybody who are just like you and you just have so much in common with was the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Did you have much exposure to athletes your age sort of in that circle um, prior to that? I mean, at the fittest experience, I got really good friends with a couple kids and we had like a training camp at one of their houses a couple months after. So I got to meet a couple of the kids who were competing at the games mm -hmm. and got to see what they were like, which was pretty cool. So I knew a couple of kids when I got there. Okay. Do you guys have like a, like a group chat going constantly? Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of them. Who's, who's, who's in those group chats? I want to know who's in your group chats for CrossFit. I mean, everyone, mo most of the kids from the games, then there's a couple, like two or three older kids who just aged out like the year before. Okay. And what kind of things do you talk about? Like, do you talk about current events in the sport? Like, do you talk about, Ricky Garrard coming back after his ban, or you talk about what a jerk Dave Castro is. Like, what are some of the things that go on in that chat? Sometimes it's, uh, 
yeah, we talk about like each other's lives, stuff like that. Um, always trying to plan like weekends we can come like train with each other. Uh, is it something? Would your mom be horrified if she read the text string, or would she, she be okay? I don't think so. It's, it's okay. nothing crazy. So I, I'm coming at you from a. I have an 18 year old son. And he plays baseball, and so they would have a baseball group chat, and he would always tell me like you could never read it. You would never, you'd be horrified at the things that were in it. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'd be that scared, but it's good to know that you guys are just, you know, talking about wholesome things, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So talk about some of your experiences at the games in terms of events, because I mean, you did amazing for your rookie year. Um, you know, in the last year that you're able to qualify in this age group, um, you sort of took the field by storm. So what do you have to say for yourself? Some of the, some of the events stuck out in your mind. Definitely the first one. It uh, definitely surprised me because we do a decent amount of running and I was like kind of confident because a couple weeks before the games, like they leaked the workouts. Uh, okay. I'll do decent. I'll do decent on the run. They said it was like a heavy deadlift workout. That workout's going to be hard for me. And then a max snatch. And I was also scared of that. Thought the run was definitely going to be the best uh, event on the first day, and I was pretty nervous going into it. But during it, it was like the worst pain I, I probably ever endured in a workout. It was like I was just trying so hard to hold on the whole time. Like I went out way too hot, and then the sun also like just made it so much worse. Yeah, well, that was that was the first event, right? So I would imagine you've got some nervous energy built up, and. <laughs> you know, you just kind of want to go for it because you're trying to prove something, right? Yeah, that I was questioning. I was like, why am I doing this to myself? <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, not way too hot. Um, I read somewhere that you train eight, eight for eight hours. Is that, is that true? Do you have eight hour training sessions? Um, not now. Okay. Now it's like, four and a half, four to five, something around there. But over the summer, we definitely, I would say we overtrained for the games just because <laughs> I wanted to be so prepared. We would just get there at like, like I want to say like noon and just train till like eight every day. I mean, I yeah. wouldn't say we're training the whole time. There's time where we're eating food, like relaxing, but that's how long we are in the gym for. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. And when you say we, who, who are you talking about? Um, I have a training partner. He's also my age. He's, okay. uh, he started a little bit later. I got him into CrossFit. I think it was last summer, last June. And he got really good, really fast. So he's definitely like helped me push on workouts. I wouldn't have been able to like done the amount of volume I did without a training partner. So he definitely helped me get to where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. So let's talk, let's go back to the games now. So you've got event one under your belt and did, did it go, it didn't go really as planned. You were slightly disappointed with how you finished in that one. Yeah, I was super disappointed, but at the same time, I was like, just glad I finished because I, I was like, I don't even care anymore. I just wanted to get that thing over with. Right. I just sat in the ice bath for like 20 minutes long until they kicked me out of there. <laughs> and then we had to pretty much go straight to the next event. So that was pretty brutal on like my hamstrings and stuff. It was like mm -hmm. deadlift. I think the next one was deadlift and rope climb. So that was pretty bad. And you don't have really anything to sort of compare it to in terms of like in 2019, when the teens and the age groups were all sort of in a different location um, and like during the actual games when elite individuals and teams went. So I assume you were happy with the fact that you got to be like in the Coliseum and on the big field um, and to sort of get your weekend over with before um, the elite athletes, you know, the, eight, the open athletes started to come and compete. Yeah, I like that just because I really wanted to watch everyone else. I wanted mm -hmm. to see like the individuals compete. So I thought it was nice that we were able to do it before I guess right and get it over with was there anybody that you sort of uh fanboy over that's in the field right now what'd you say 
Is there anybody that you like fanboy over either a female athlete, a team, a male athlete that you just are kind of like in awe of that you got to see, or maybe they got to meet? I don't think so. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I'm not really like that anymore. I try not to be. Sure. It's like, well, how about athletes that maybe you look up to? Yeah, I really, uh, I think Jason Hopper's pretty cool. He's like pretty new and he's super strong. I, I thought he was cool after I saw the, what was it, semifinals. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to, I wanted to watch him compete. I like all the, like the younger new guys. I like, uh, what's his name? Guy Malhieros. Yeah. He's, he's super cool. I love his like energy and stuff. Mm-hmm. Did you get to meet any of those guys? I mean, I saw them. I didn't go up to them or anything. I just didn't mm-hmm. want to bother them. Like, sure. Sure. That's cool. Um, okay. So you were, what, about 60 points ahead of second place by the end of your week? I think so. Something like that. That's pretty awesome. What did it feel like to just be on the top of that podium? It was pretty cool. Like, I mean, at first, I was uh, – I, I couldn't really think. I was just like, like, it didn't hit me yet, pretty much. I was like, what is going on? And then after like a day or so later, I was like, I really just like won that thing. Like <laughs> I always dre- dreamed of making the games but never actually winning it. That was just crazy. Yeah. And your first time making it and, and winning it, which doesn't really happen very often. Yeah. For anybody. Pretty cool. Um, let's talk about your knee a little bit. You had knee surgery back in 2019. What exactly did you have done? I, they called it a joint mouse. I tore just a bunch of cartilage in my knee. Wasn't okay. anything like super serious. Just always when I played soccer, I'd have knee pain. It was just like over usage and stuff. And my, my tendons were like super tight. And I started ramping up the volume in 2019 because I really wanted to make the games Mm -hmm. I didn't didn't know what I was doing so I was like picking and choosing workouts I'd see on Instagram and doing like some comp train workouts anything I could and that was not the smartest thing at all because my knees just got worse and worse and I if you know what small love is like the squat cycle Mm -hmm. I did that like two or three times in a row (laughs) because the first time I did it my, my squat game like 80 pounds so like oh I gotta keep doing this I'm just gonna get insanely strong and (laughs) one time during like a it was like a running and air squats workout it just tore Mm, okay so you knew like when it happened something something sort of triggered it yeah I just felt like a little like pull and a pop in my knee okay and it was like kind of painful but it wasn't that bad and once it like happened for like a couple weeks I like had the little thing moving around in my knee and it would get stuck in between my like two knee bones oh. and it would like lock up and I couldn't really like move my leg and you could like it, it pretty much just like a piece of cartilage that moved all the way around my leg it was pretty right weird. and then I had to get an x-ray and get surgery to get that thing out and that was like a couple weeks before the online qualifier so that sucked right because you because you made that but you just couldn't complete it correct yeah I did the qualifier I just didn't get as much training or anything as I would have liked to okay and how far how long were you out from that surgery uh it was like just over a month probably okay not bad did you have to go to PT and do all that or did you kind of just rehab it on your own yeah pretty much on my own during the time I did like upper body type stuff but yeah, it wasn't too bad. Mm-hmm. And then in 2020, you didn't, did you even do the open? No. No. So I what just, was your, what's the thought process for that behind that? Um, yeah, I knew it was coming around. I was, I, I just, I know I was like a younger dude mm-hmm. and I knew I just was not even close to being strong enough because in, yeah, my lifts were just not even close to being strong. In 2019, I was like, my clean was like 185, and these other kids are like cleaning 255. 
I was like, I just need to take a year off to get stronger and just get more experience, like get on an actual program and, and learn how to actually do CrossFit. <laughs> Okay. So let's talk about that a little bit. Did you, what kind of program did you get on? I got on, so I was doing like comp train, like I said, like picking and choosing, not the smartest thing. And Mm -hmm. my mom switched over to mayhem. She was like, you should try this with me. It probably will get you better. And I started out doing what's rich doing. And the first day it's like all these heavy, like insanely heavy weights that I was just not even close to being able to lift but like one round of the workout and just died and then I switched to mayhem compete and that's pretty much what like changed me really had you have you ever been to Cookville I did over last summer to train for the games oh okay so this past summer you went down there yeah it was pretty okay yeah well did you get to go to the barn and train with Haley and Rich and the whole crew uh, we went, so two of the days we were at uh, Cross and Mayhem, mm-hmm. and then one of the days for a swimming workout, we went to his dad's house, like senior's house, mm-hmm. we swam in the pond and did like, they had like a zip line and stuff, that was really cool. Did you get I to go in his, his dad's barn? Uh, we didn't work out in there, but we uh, like were able to look around and stuff. Did you see the bathroom? No. It's so weird. There's like a little bathroom with like, it looks like an outhouse almost. There's like a half moon carved in the door and you just kind of open up. It's like this tiny little closet inside the garage. I figured maybe if you had to go to the bathroom, you would have used it. That's crazy. (laughs) But yeah, that barn's iconic. That's cool. Who did you do that with? Did you go with your mom or other training partners? I went with my, well, yeah, I went with my mom. So I emailed Jake, the head of programming i asked him about some uh like extra work i could do before the games because i did not think i was doing enough Mm -hmm. and he messaged me he was like did you see the email for me for to come down to cookville and it was like three days before so we like quickly booked a ticket and flew down there we met i met a kid the kid who won the 1415 division ty jenkins he was down there and Another girl was down there in the 14-15 division, mm-hmm. and uh, I met them and became pretty good friends with them, and we pushed each other on all the workouts we did. That was pretty nice. Love it. Love it. So what are you thinking of doing now that you're in this sort of off-season? You're, you can't fall back on these age groups anymore, right? I mean, you're 18. You're in the, you're in the adult group now. <laughs> yeah. The, the open division. Now you did go to pit, um, fitness, the teen, what, I'm, yeah. I'm getting the name wrong. Elite teen throwdown. Yeah, yeah. And you did that right after the games and you won that too. Yeah, that was, that was pretty fun. I did it with my friend. It was his first like in-person, uh, like, individual competition. So I this is your training first. partner that you mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we both did that together. That was super fun. And you didn't do that last year. No, I wish I would have. I I didn't see it was a thing until after it happened. Okay. I was like, oh, I should have tried that. Yeah. And they're going to, they have a, they have an 18 to 19 division, right? Yeah, they do. Okay. So what are your plans now in terms of CrossFit? Are we going to try to do like Wadapalooza, you're going to go to the fittest again as a, as an individual. What are you thinking? Yeah, I'd like to do this year, do a couple of team competitions, like as an individual, I got an invite to Wadapalooza. So I definitely want to go to that because I wanted to do that since like I started. Now I finally have the chance. Definitely probably do the fittest experience. I'll, I'm going to try the elite division. If I don't make it, it's like, whatever. Sure. And Oh, uh, there's one other competition. I don't remember what it was, but I want to try just smaller competitions as a, like a individual male, just so right. I get experience. Okay. And you're what, you're in a suburb of Chicago, right? Yeah. We're just North of Chicago. Okay. The gym is in Northbrook, Illinois. <laughs> Rally point endeavors. 
Yeah, that's what it's called. Okay. Nice. And how long have you been there? Is that the gym that your mom works at? Yeah, so we have uh, four gyms. We just, we're closing down two of them. Okay. And we're just going to expand, like, the two gyms that we do have. One of them's closer to the city of Chicago. And we're going to just make those two gyms a lot better. So the Northbrook one is the one I go to. And I used to go to the Deerfield. The Northbrook one's, like, the newest or the second newest gym they have. Okay. It's super nice there. So we've been training there. And it, I assume it's big enough then that they can do, I think. they can do classes and sort of accommodate you because you're probably not doing classes, right? Yeah. So over COVID, it was pretty hard. There's a lot of time where we'd uh, like train at home, but now since everything's like opening up again, we're able to train there most days. Sometimes we got to wait until class is over to start our workout, but for the most part, it's pretty open. Do you have a pretty big uh, setup at home as well? Kind of. Uh, not as much as like, because Mayhem, we do a lot of different equipment and stuff. So we sometimes like, I don't have a skier. I don't have like a assault bike or anything, but mm -hmm. I have like a rower, a squat rack, a bar, weights, dumbbells. It's okay. the basic stuff. Got it. So it's more advantageous for you than to actually get into the gym and, and do that. When was the last time you took a class? <laughs> a long time ago. A long time ago. Probably, probably like 2019. All right. I'm going to make a mom suggestion here for you. Take a class, just one, and make it a big deal. And I guarantee you all those members are going to be so jazzed that you took the time to take class with them. And it's not going to break your training. You got You got to do it. Seriously. It's, it would be so much fun. Um, does your mom take classes? Or she she's has, yeah, she's in doing like mayhem and um, like other programs to like do rehab because she's having pain in like her back and her knees. She's been okay. doing class lately, like once or twice a week, I think. Mm hmm. Is that where you're, do you have like your sign, your CrossFit game sign at the gym or is it at your house? Oh, it's just like folded up at my house in my room. I didn't <laughs> hang it or anything. It, no, you didn't have like a ticker tape parade when you got home or a big celebration at your box? No. High school, did, did they announce anything on the PA system like in the fall when you came back to school? I mean, nobody really knew about it at first. Kids, like, saw my Instagram and kids were, like, congratulating me and stuff, even though nobody mm -hmm. really knew what it was. And there was, like, some article that the, like, local newspaper wrote about me. And the school saw it. And then they, like, wrote it in the newsletter or something. And then oh, cool. kids, kids and teachers started, like, talking about it in class, like, just, like, a couple weeks ago, which was pretty funny. That's cool. I will tell you, I had to pay $1.99 to read that article online. Really? So, yeah. When I was doing my research on you, I was like, oh, here's, a, here's an article about Nate. And I clicked the button. It was like some Daily Herald or something. That, and they made me pay $1.99. Yeah. So see? That's crazy. I love it. Yeah. So hi, senior year, tell me about senior year. Is there homecoming coming up? Do you have a homecoming? We just had homecoming last night. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, Did yeah. you go? I was probably going to go, but one of my friends, Caleb McClure from the games, he lives in Southern Illinois and he came up here to train. Okay. Yesterday, the whole day. So we're like, oh, we'd much rather train with him than go to homecoming. So we trained with him all day and uh, like got food and stuff at nighttime instead. All right. So you didn't like stand up any dates or anything? No. Okay. All right. Just making sure you do, we're doing the right thing there. Um, so senior year, what else do you have going on? I mean, school's got to be a priority, right? Yeah, or is it? I got to I gotta get into college and then <laughs> trying to just train as much as possible, trying to get as strong as possible. So is that something that you and your parents sort of butt heads on a little bit? Like, would you rather take like a gap year and maybe see where you can go with this CrossFit thing focused and your parents are kind of pushing you to go to school? I mean, they're definitely like, they definitely want me to go and stuff, but I don't think I'd want to take a gap year. I just, 
I don't know. I don't know how busy I'm going to be at college yet. So it Mm -hmm. might be hard to get all my hours of training in, but I don't think I would need a gap year this coming year, but maybe in the future. Okay. So it's something that you would potentially consider, like get in there, figure out how much work school is versus your training. And then maybe as you continue to develop and get better, there comes a time, maybe your sophomore year or junior year, when you want to cut back on classes to train a little more. Yeah. Is that what you're like thinking? That. I okay. think so, yeah. Are your parents going to be cool with that or is that going to be a tough sell? Uh, I think they, I don't know yet, <laughs> to be honest. Um, they've been pretty supportive about it. Like mm-hmm. at first, at first, before, like I started competing and stuff, they did not like the idea of me being in the gym for five hours a day or whatever. But mm-hmm. now they're pretty chill with it because they know it's like my like, biggest focus in my head all the time. Yeah. Really important for you. So, um, b- body wise, do you have goals? Like, are you at the weight you want to be at? Do you still need to put on some weight? How tall are you right now? I'm five nine. I don't think I'm growing anymore. You think you're done? Okay. So five, nine, that's like a good average size. What about yeah. uh, your weight? Are you like 180 ish is what so I'm going to guess. At, at the games, I was like 170 and okay. I was like, well, I was 175, but all the training got me to 170. Mm-hmm. And I started working with functional eating, like a nutrition company. And so far I've put on 15 pounds. I'm at like 185 now. Nice. Very good. I want to get to 195. That's what I said my goal was for next okay. year. But I've usually I've gained like 10 pounds a year the past couple of years, but I've already gained like a ton already just from like focusing on my protein and quality of food over quantity. Okay. So compare and contrast for us. So last year you were not working with a nutrition company. Um, I heard you were sort of eating a lot of Ben and Jerry's. Right. Yeah. Man after my own heart. What's your favorite flavor? I don't know. I doesn't just matter. Whatever, whatever melts easily. Cause I would just always eat it right before I go to bed. Cause I would never get enough calories during the day. And okay. So you'd stick it out on the counter and let it melt and then just drink it. Yeah. Solid strategy. I don't know. I don't yeah. know if I could do that or not. I do uh, the night before a competition, I will eat a pint of ice cream. But I will not. Yeah, but I will enjoy it and eat it and chew it and, you know, enjoy all the stuff that's inside of it. But uh, that's funny when I read that about Ben and Jerry's. It's like it's the go to. I also train a lot of baseball players who are like freshmen in high school pitchers who are trying to be, you know, like six to 200 pounds and who are like five, nine, 140 pounds. So, yeah. you know, we're working with them to, to get them to eat as well. So compare your diet from last year and give us just a little lowdown of maybe some of the things you would eat compared to what it looks like now that you're, you know, working under the direction of somebody who is a little more structured. Yeah. Cause this last is fun. Year, I'd eat like a muffin, uh, a bar in the morning, maybe a banana and like some type of shake. <laughs> I'd put like ice cream, protein, and milk that's pretty much it in the morning and mm-hmm. then for lunch i have if you know what jack's pizza is just like a frozen pizza okay. i would heat that in the oven and that's a thousand calories so i eat that and i probably have a couple more bars throughout the day then at nighttime i'd have nighttime was my only like decent meal because my parents would make that one for me mm-hmm. and i'd have like rice chicken beef whatever and at night I'd have a pint of Ben and Jerry's <laughs> and you drink, you drink a pint of Ben and Jerry's. I, you gotta, you gotta put that in yeah. there. Cause that's special. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was probably even worse than that. Cause I'd have like ice cream bars and just random stuff. I find in the freezer throughout the day, anything I see that has like tons of calories that I mm-hmm. wouldn't have to chew on forever. That's just what I'd eat. Would you, would you pack your lunch at school or would you get lunch at the cafeteria? I mean, we didn't have school sophomore and junior year at all. Oh, that's so. right. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. High school's so. weird. Been weird for you, huh? Yeah. So I would mostly just make <sighs> pizza at home. Mm-hmm. But freshman year, freshman year, I definitely didn't eat enough at all. I didn't even focus on nutrition. I would mm-hmm. just eat 
whatever. I was always hungry and stuff. I was super small then. Okay. So now you're working with functional eating. You're, you're back to school though. So how does that work? Is that a little more challenging? Uh, Definitely. Uh, My food doesn't taste as good (laughs) because I I try, I try my hardest. Like I've been trying to get as much like breakfast in as possible because I used to not really eat breakfast and trying to get like fat in the morning. And that's it's been hard to hard eat in the morning. Stuff. It's like your yeah. body's not like ready to accept food or anything. I could go hours without eating too, but breakfast, they say, if you're trying to gain weight too, they say you should have like a thousand calories before 9am. Yeah. I cannot it's do hard that. to do hard to do. So what does breakfast look like then? What do you, what are you forcing down? Uh, I try to eat banana, peanut butter, a bagel, um, a bar, <laughs> mm-hmm. some, type of, some type of juice. I don't really have time to like make eggs or anything because I love my sleep more than like anyone. <laughs> but I sleep till like last second and then I give myself like 20 minutes to like get ready and get to school every morning. Mm-hmm. Crazy. So, and lunch, I always just look in the free or the fridge and there will be like rice or like chicken or beef I just like throw that in my like my backpack and just like run to school not really prepared but are you do you have a place where you can heat that stuff up or do you have to eat it cold I have to eat it cold they used to have a a microwave at school but I don't don't know if kids because like started fires all the time (laughs) <laughs> what happened? They just don't have it anymore. They burnt popcorn is what they did. That's the worst yeah. thing you can do to a microwave. It smells terrible. Yeah. Oh, that stinks. Yeah. Most of the kids around here in high school that I'm coaching to with nutrition, they don't, they don't have a microwave. So we have to come up with really sort of creative ideas for lunches. It's not easy. Yeah. It's rough. And then snacks. Are you allowed to like eat in class and stuff? Are they cool about that or no? Not so much. They like, there's like a rule that we're not allowed to, but some teachers are super chill. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just if it'll get you through our class, then just eat. Okay. So I just eat as much as possible in the classes that allow me to do it. Mm-hmm. And is that like bars and stuff typically? Yeah. Bars, bananas, and uh, body armors. Okay. Drinks. Favorite flavor, body armor. Uh, I like the fruit punch ones and the, the tropical punch. punch. Okay. My kids don't even, I don't even know what the flavors are. They just tell me like the black one, the black label one, <laughs> whatever that one is. <laughs> That's cool. And then dinner, same like mom and dad are fixing that for you and helping you out to get what you need. Yeah. Dinner is definitely the best meal of the day still. Mm-hmm. I My lunch and my dinner are pretty much the same because my lunch is usually dinner from the night before. The leftovers. Yeah. Yeah. Have you gotten into cooking at all? Uh, over quarantine, I was super into it. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we would have like a cooking night where I would just like, we like cook a bunch of food. And that was super nice. Uh, but during school, I had zero time. Yeah. So are you working out before school? It sounds like you're sleeping until the very bitter end. You're rushing to school. And then I'm guessing all your workout happens after school. Yeah, pretty much. It, it would definitely help to do it before school, but I just would not be able to focus in school at all if I did that. Yeah, it sounds like you're not that you're not that morning guy, the morning workout guy. Have you ever worked out in the morning? Besides um, the games? So, yeah, <laughs> over the summer, we have this dude at our gym and he was like a swimmer in college. So we would go and train like swimming sessions at like 5 a.m. every morning. Okay. I was like, super dead every morning but we did that just because that's the only time he was able to train us Mm -hmm. and that that was pretty brutal yeah I would imagine that's not fun swimming is swimming is hard how how was the swim for you that did you you guys swam right at the games yeah like a run swim or whatever you want to call it but Mm -hmm. that was definitely I was the most nervous for that event out of any event because while I was swimming over the summer, like we would do all these swim workouts with like thrusters and then get in the water and swim. And I was just always so dead because I mm-hmm. swam as a child and I definitely had like the mechanics down. I knew how to swim because I did it my whole life, but I hadn't swam in a couple of years when we started doing it over the summer and my breathing was just so messed up. 
like I would just get so out of breath when I was swimming. So I was super nervous at the games that everyone was just going to like go freestyle the whole way and just like kill it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was super surprised when I got second in that event. Yeah. I thought I was just going to, I was going to die. But and the, and the water didn't affect you at all. Yeah, I heard about people getting sick from the water and you were fine. No. Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> it's all that, it's all that Ben and Jerry's you, you've been eating trains your change your system, you know, for what might be in that water. Um, okay. So back to school, favorite subject. Um, I guess science. <laughs> science. Do you have any kind of adult goals? I know we're talking, you know, CrossFit games and all that, but once sort of the dust settles on that career, do you have, do you have any idea what you want to do when you grow up? Um, I mean, I honestly love to be like Frazier from where they have like their businesses, their programming, their gyms, whatever. That'd be super mm -hmm. cool. But, uh, I'd also, I'm thinking of studying like, uh, sports medicine, something okay. in that field in college. So something like that. You can always minor in business. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. Right. That's so that mm -hmm. our science and math sort of your strong suits in terms of academics uh science probably is i don't know about math math not so much <laughs> how about do you have to take a foreign language where you where you live yeah i mean i don't think you have to but i did for two years three years okay what'd you take in middle school i took spanish for three years and then in high school i was just like i did not do well at spanish eighth grade so I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to switch to Chinese. <laughs> so I took Chinese for three years. No, it's super <laughs> hard. Yeah, no, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't hard. It wasn't. Was it Mandarin or was it just Chinese? It was Mandarin. I thought it was going to be super hard, but like they took the class super slow. So it okay. wasn't as bad as, yeah. So are, were you like talking in full sentences like at the time? Yeah, but if someone asked me, like, say a sentence now, I just do not remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a, one of the kids I train, he's a freshman in high school, and there's about four kids that come at the same time. And he's been teaching us Mandarin. Um, he's, he's taught us a couple words because he just started taking it. And, you know, he's a freshman. He, he's very excited about it. And uh, yeah. I'm sure by the time he's a junior, he'll hate it too. But um, that's really cool. Mandarin, yeah. I like that. That takes a special kind of person to tackle that. It shows that you're like up for adventure and, uh, and you like a challenge for sure. Um, all right. So we're training for Wadapalooza, yeah. maybe, maybe TFX. I'm going to be at TFX by the way. So we'll have to say hi to each other there. I'm actually gonna be at Wadapalooza too, but I think I'm just going to be a spectator. I'm not going to be involved in it. Um, so that'll be fun. We'll have someone to watch. Um, <laughs> I have to tell you, I have a 16 year old daughter who is completely infatuated with you. Um, not to put you on the spot at all, but she told me if I don't mention it during this recording that she will kill me. So I'm mentioning it now. I'm going on the record. Eliana has a little baby crush on Nate Ackerman. I said it. She's she's coming to Miami with us. So you might get to meet her. And awesome. I don't know, I don't know if you have a girlfriend or somebody that you're interested in. And this is by no means, we live in Delaware. You live way too far away, but uh, <laughs> you've got us, you've got an open admirer in Delaware. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not here or else she'd be like right here by this door, probably watching and want to say hi, but she's, she went to New York city for the weekend with her friends. So That's fun. Cause when you live in Delaware, you can do cool things like that. Sure. Um, so best of luck to you. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Um, would love to have you back sort of as you mature and the seasons progress. Um, I think you've got a really bright future and um, I think we can dig into some more things to talk about next time. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. You're Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. Enjoy your Sunday and uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Thank you. Take care, Nate.